Hey there everyone. For those of you that don't know me, my name is David and my wife and I are full-time RVers and we travel the country in this travel trailer behind me. Now our travel trailer behind us has easy lube grease fittings equipped on the spindles of the axles that makes this whole procedure so much easier. However, I'll be demonstrating the wheel bearing repack procedure for both axles that don't have easy lube grease fittings as well as ones that do. If after watching this video you determine that this job is too much for you, the good news is that an RV shop will typically charge about $100 to $200 per axle, so it's not incredibly expensive. However, I enjoy maintaining my equipment myself because not only do I save money, but I know that everything was done correctly and I take pride in a job well done. Before we get into it though, the sponsor for this video is 3-in-1's RV Care Products. And before we discovered 3-in-1 RV Care Products, one of the issues we battled with was sticking sliding windows on our travel trailer. The solution to this problem is 3-in-1's window and track dry lube. It sprays on wet but quickly dries to a clear, long-lasting, solid film of lubrication to keep windows running smoothly by reducing friction and wear and protecting against corrosion. And since it's a dry lube, it won't attract dirt or debris. The biggest problem for us is this large vertical sliding window which tends to stick to this bottom seal here. So to combat this issue, we just take their window and track dry lube and spray it directly on to that seal at the bottom. And then while we're at it, we'll also spray this into the tracks that the window rides on just to ensure smooth operation. And then taking a paper towel or any type of, you know, cloth, towel, we can just wipe off the overspray. And to find out where you can buy 3-in-1 RV care products, go ahead and check out the video description below. But let's get to the wheel bearings. The tools you'll need for this job are a bunch of shop rags, a box of gloves, a jack and jack stand, a torque wrench, wheel bearing rated grease, one seal for each wheel, brake parts cleaner, an impact, a socket that fits your lug nuts, a seal puller, a hammer, a block of wood, eye protection, and channel locks. The travel trailer we're working on is a 2017 Keystone Springdale Summerland with Dexter 3,500 pound axles. Now the first step in the process is to jack the trailer up so that we get one of these wheels hanging, the one that we're gonna be working on. And the manufacturer recommends to jack on the frame of the trailer and not the axle, because if you jack on the axle, you risk bending it. And the jack I'm using is a bottle jack because it has a smaller contact uh, with the trailer. And the reason that that's important is because we have a propane line that runs right along the I-beam that I'm gonna be jacking on. And I don't want the jack to contact that propane line and risk breaking it. Before you start jacking your trailer up though, you wanna make sure that you've got chalks on the other wheels that you're not jacking up. And also be sure to use a jack stand because it is possible that this jack could fail and just have everything come crashing down while you're working on it. So always use a jack stand. Now I'm using an impact to remove the lug nuts from the wheel. Uh, however, if you don't have an impact wrench, you're gonna wanna loosen these lug nuts up. Just, you know, get them broken loose before jacking the trailer up. Otherwise, you're just gonna be spinning the wheel. Then we need to remove the dust cover. Next is to remove this retaining clip right here. Typically trailers have a uh, castle nut and cotter key, but this setup is a little different. It serves the same purpose though. And uh, to remove this, we just kind of very lightly pry to get these uh, little clips that are holding onto that nut out. And just be real careful so that you don't drop this on the ground and get it all dirty. What I always do is I take a nice close up picture before I start taking stuff off like this just so I know how it goes back on in case there are any questions later. And now we're ready to take the hub off and it's a good idea to keep your hand right over this opening and you know maybe something under that as well uh, just in case because this bearing and there's also a washer right there you know might fall out and you don't want them to get on the ground and get all dirty. Now 
And there's our first bearing and the washer. And then on the other side, we'll have our other bearing still in there held in by the seal. The next step is to remove the seal right here. And the easiest way to do that is to use a seal removal tool. And these are super cheap. I'll drop a link in the description below uh, so you can pick one up for yourself to make this job easier. Now that the seal's out, we can remove the inside bearing. And next we can just start wiping out all the old grease from the bearings. Just get them nice and clean. And while we're cleaning the bearings, we also want to take a look at the bearings themselves, make sure there's no pitting or any damage on those bearings. Mine are looking really good, so we can definitely reuse these. But if it's been a long time since you have uh, repacked your wheel bearings, then you know maybe you'll have some damage and uh, the bearings will need to be replaced. And then we can also start cleaning out all of the old grease from inside the drum as well. And I'm just pulling out all the, the large globs of it with my finger, and then I can go back in there with a shop rag and uh, clean out all the rest. Take special care not to get grease all over the inside of this drum because then you are basically lubricating your brakes and you don't want your brake shoes to be contacting any of that grease. Uh, but if you do get grease around, it's not the end of the world. Just use some brake cleaner and uh, clean all that grease off of the brakes. So you can see we did get some grease on the braking surface on the inside of this drum. So we're just gonna take brake parts cleaner, like I said, and spray that and clean that grease off. It's really important not to have any residual grease anywhere on the braking surfaces. And you also want to make sure that you remove any residual paint or anything that might be left over from the old seal that we popped out. You can see um, the yellow paint is left behind on mine, so we just take brake, brake parts cleaner, spray that, and then wipe it off with a rag. You want that seal surface to be completely clean before you install the new seal. You also want to inspect the race right here where that bearing rides on to see if there's any damage to it also. And thankfully my inside race looks perfectly good and the outside race looks really good as well. Now it's time to repack the wheel bearings and the grease that I'm using is just a Napa brand uh, wheel bearing and chassis grease. Uh, you definitely are going to want to use a grease that is temperature rated for wheel bearings. So to repack the bearing, I just take a glob of grease in the palm of my hand like that, and you just take the bearing and you just kind of scrape it into that grease and sort of work that grease in. And as you keep doing this, you should be able to see the old grease kind of start to push out through the top or maybe the new grease start to seep out through the top as well. And this is sort of a tedious process. You just keep going until you see that new grease coming out the top. And you can see that new grease seeping out through the top right there. So we're definitely getting it worked in there real good and just keep you just keep going all the way around. And they do make a bearing packer attachment for a grease gun. So if you would prefer to use one of those uh, instead of doing it like this, the old fashioned way, then uh, I'll go ahead and drop a link in the video description below to a grease gun as well as the um, wheel bearing packer attachment. And before we put the bearings in, I'm just gonna pack in some grease into the hub itself and make sure to cover the bearing races with grease as well. You know, just so those bearings are not only packed with grease themselves, but they also have grease inside of the hub that they can ride in as well. Now we're gonna install our inner bearing first with the, you know, the cone shape of it. 
facing the same way as the race. And now we can install our new seal. And we just picked up this new seal from Napa. I took the old seal in with me and um, they were able to match the part up and got me a new seal. And just slowly and easily tap around the edge to try and get this started straight. So you don't want to try and put it in crooked. And then once that seal is started in there, you can just take a block of wood that spans the entire seal and go ahead and tap her in. And you want to hit it until that seal is flush. You know, you'll kind of tell that the sound of the metal clanging completely changes once that seal is set in there flush with the hub. And then we can install the outside bearing. Again, the uh, smaller diameter piece, part of it goes in. Next, we want to clean all of the old grease off of the spindle as well. And in the back here, I've got all this caked up dirt um, from probably where old grease sort of was seeping out from behind the seal. So I'm just going to hit that with brake parts cleaner. And then I can wipe, I can wipe that clean. And you know, if you're doing this outside, you're probably gonna want to put a tray to catch you know, that brake parts cleaner as it comes off, cause you know, it's pretty nasty stuff. I'm gonna take a little more wheel bearing grease and just apply it all to the outside of this spindle also. I don't really need it to go on too thick for the spindle, especially on this, uh, back where the seal mounts to, uh, but I am just gonna get a thin layer all over. While you've got the wheel and the drum off, this is a great time to inspect your brakes and just make sure everything is in working order and you've got plenty of life left on your brake pads. And now we're ready to reinstall the drum back on. And when you do it, you wanna be very careful not to gouge the end of the spindle against your seal. Uh, you definitely don't want to damage the seal at all during reinstallation. And another thing that you want to keep in mind is this front bearing is still loose in there. So you, you know, you kind of want to hold your hand like this when you are reinstalling it so that doesn't fall out. The grease should be kind of holding it in there because it is just so thick, but you know, you don't, you don't want that to drop onto the ground and then have to clean that bearing again. So we'll, I'll put it on there nice and carefully. Then we can just kind of shove this front bearing back so that it seats properly in there. Don't forget to reinstall the washer that was on the other side of this bearing. It's extremely important. Mine kind of has this D-shape cut out to it, so it can only go on one way. And I did also put a thin layer of grease on that washer because it does ride up against that bearing as well as this nut. So I just wanted that to have thin layer of grease also. It'll keep it from corroding. And then we can reinstall this nut. And then taking a pair of channel locks, we can grab a hold of this nut and turn until it's snug and then back off a quarter of a turn. And then we can reinstall this funky clip. Or if you have a standard castle nut, you can uh, then go ahead and install the cotter key back into your castle nut. And then just make sure that your drum rotates freely. You don't have that nut on too tight. And then we just have to reinstall the dust cover. And I know when I took it off, there wasn't really any grease in here at all, but uh, growing up, whenever my dad repacked his wheel bearings on his truck, he just filled this with grease. And, you know, I don't know if you need to do it or if it really matters at all, but that's what he did. So, you know, I'm just gonna do it as well. And then we're good to reinstall the dust cover. And get it started by hand and then using a block of wood and a hammer you can tap it on tight
And then we can go ahead and reinstall our tire. And I'm gonna use an impact to get the lug nuts back on all the way just to save time. This is a really fine thread and it takes forever to just uh, crank it on by hand. But afterwards, I'm gonna come back uh, once this wheel is back on the ground and I'm gonna torque these lug nuts with a torque wrench because I really want to make sure that the lug nuts are properly torqued. And you always want to make sure that you go in a star pattern so that you draw the wheel in evenly. You never want to go just from one to the other because then the wheel kind of draw in crooked and that's not good. And at this point we're ready to set the trailer back down on the ground so we can remove the jack stand and start cranking this back down. I hope your jack is faster than mine. And then using a torque wrench we want to make sure that we get to the proper torque on my lug nuts, uh, 115 foot-pounds of torque is the spec. And the torque wrench I'm using is a digital readout, which is really nice because then you know you get exactly the amount of torque that you want. And again, mine is 115 foot-pounds. And there you have it. That is the full bearing repack procedure for those of you that don't have trailers with an easy lube system on your axles. But now I'm going to show the wheel bearing grease repack procedure for those of you that do have an easy lube system on your travel trailer or fifth wheels axles. And you'll be able to see how much easier, cleaner, and faster a bearing wheel pack is on the easy lube system as opposed to without it. The tools you'll need for this job if you have easy lube grease fittings is lots of shop rags or paper towels, a box of gloves, a torque wrench, a screwdriver, a socket that fits your wheel lug nuts, an impact, a grease gun, and at least one tube of wheel bearing rated grease for each axle. The first step is to remove this rubber seal that is covering the grease zerk behind it. And as you can see, mine is damaged somehow, even though this is the first time I've ever done a bearing repack. So I'm definitely going to need to pick up another one of these so that I can replace it. And it's probably a good idea to have extras of these on hand for when you do a bearing repack in the future, in case they're damaged, you can just replace them. And they're real easy to remove. You just get in behind them with a screwdriver, just kind of pry them out. And then in there you can see the grease zerk that we're going to attach the grease gun to. Dexter Axles, which is the manufacturer for my axles, recommends not to use a pneumatic grease gun. It just needs to be a hand pump one um, because the pneumatic ones apparently can cause damage to this. So we'll just attach our handheld grease gun onto that and you just start pumping in the new grease. And it's important to continue rotating the hub or your wheel as you pump grease in. It takes quite a while and a lot of pumps, but eventually you'll start to see the old grease get forced out from the back around the outside of the spindle. And you just keep pumping to evacuate all of that old grease out and have it replaced with new grease. You can really start to see that old grease get forced out now. But you just keep pumping. Look at all that old grease coming out. I'm gonna wipe this off so it doesn't all just fall to the ground at some point and we can actually see And you want to keep pumping until the grease that's coming out 
is mostly new grease, which I think we're starting to get to just now. You're gonna wanna get plenty of tubes of grease because this is pumping a lot of grease in there and back out. But I think we're there now. So I'm using a red grease and you can see on that paper towel, this is mostly new grease. So I think we're good on this one, finally. So then we just wipe off any excess grease from the rim of this dust cover. And then we replace our rubber seal, which again, mine is damaged and will need to be replaced. Unfortunately, I don't have any of them on hand. And then we can put our wheel back on and we're all done. Now for some of you, you won't even have to remove your wheels to access the grease zerk if you have Easy Lube axles. However, for me, Unfortunately, because my wheels are designed, I do have to jack the trailer up and remove the wheels because they have this center cap that covers that access to the grease zerk. But like I said, many of you will have wheels that just leave that uh, rubber seal exposed and then all you have to do is just remove that seal and you can access the grease zerk without having to jack your trailer or fifth wheel up off the ground and removing the wheel. And that just makes this whole procedure that much quicker and easier to do. And that's it. Now you know how to perform a wheel bearing grease repack on both standard trailer axles, as well as those equipped with easy lube grease fittings. Again, I'll go ahead and place links to the grease as well as all the tools I used in the video description below. So if you're looking to tackle this project yourself and you're missing something, you can go ahead and make sure that you can pick up everything you need very easily. I hope this video was helpful and good luck repacking the wheel bearings on your rig. I'll see you next time. Bye.